Hello and welcome. In this video, I'm going to be talking about vector projection and rejection. Now, as graphics programmers, game developers, the word projection is an unfortunate choice of terminology because for us, projection has a very specific meaning. So another way to talk about that is with the following fundamental theorem. Let's say that we have one vector and we have another vector. We can always decompose one vector and express it in terms of the other. Here's what we can do. We can imagine taking this V vector as like our fundamental basis. So we can take the tip of this U, sort of drop it down, so that now we have one bit, which is going along in the direction of V, and then another bit, which is going up at 90 degree angle to that, and it comes up tail, whatever you want to call it, of U. And this has decomposed U with regard to the basis vector V. The vector U is equal to the vector sum of two other vectors. One of them is the component of U, which is parallel with V. And the other one is the component of U, which is perpendicular with V. This parallel component is my vector projection, and this perpendicular component is my vector rejection. So just think of it like that. We're decomposing some vector U with regard to some reference vector V. So the next part is how do we do that? Well, first of all, I want to get the length of this projection vector. Now, if we just do simple math, we know that these two vectors U and V have some angle between them. We know that the length here is the length of the vector U. We need to get the length of this vector down here. By trigonometry, we have our hypotenuse times the cosine of that angle theta. So this is the length of U times cos theta. And then we also, if I look at this, this is a scalar number. But I also want this to be out in the direction of V. So in order to produce a vector which is parallel in the same direction, but possibly with a different length, all I need to do is take the vector V and scale it by some factor. So in this case, what I can do is I can take this vector here, multiply it by the vector V. But wait a second. We also have the fact that the vector V can decompose into the length of the vector V times the normalized version of the vector V. Okay, now looking at that, is anything jumping out? That's right, from the previous video, we saw that this thing here is the dot product, but I misspoke. Here, the vector V is actually introducing its own length in there, and it should be independent of the length of V. So I could pick a larger V, a smaller V, and the projection should be the same. So what I want is I actually want to multiply this by the normalized, the unit vector V, and, but then we know that the length of the unit vector V is one. So here I've got this stuff times one, that's the same thing. Now we've got it. So if I look at this part here, this is the vector U dot product with the normalized vector V. And so if I look at the whole thing, what I'm doing, so I'm taking that dot product that's indicating the proportion of the vector u, which is parallel with the vector v. This will be some number between negative 1 and 1. And then I'll multiply that by the unit vector v, and this will produce some vector 
which is heading out in the length of uh, sorry heading out in the direction of v and has the length of the projection this is a bit of a trick but what i can do is if i know that projection i can get the rejection almost for free let's think about dependence and independence if i take a vector u and i find all the stuff in u which is common with v that's what this projection is doing then if i remove that from the original vector then everything that's left after removing the dependent stuff the common elements will be independent will be orthogonal will be perpendicular however you want to say it so here we have the formula for the vector projection here we have the formula for the vector rejection what are some actual examples of this let's say for instance that we have some surface it's going along like this and we have some object which is here and it's just collided with the surface and it wants to move with this sort of um, velocity and we want that object to slide well if we want to slide then we're going to have no movement away from the surface but we are going to have some component of velocity which is right here which is along the surface let's formalize this let's go v for velocity uh, s for surface or t for tangent or however, however you want to do it now this resultant the way i would get this as you can see is i take that velocity vector i take the projection onto the surface another example let's say that we have a surface and we have some yeah we have some object and that object is moving along and i want the object like that and i want the object to rebound okay so if i take that velocity and i take the surface vector this is the rejection so what i want to do is in the end i want that rejection to be reflected just like that and i want this to be my resultant after rebound instead of coming along here i want to go because I've, I've come in like this right this is my incoming velocity i want to rebound like that okay so what i'll do is i'll say my resultant is equal to we'll have our velocity vector and what i'll do is if i take away the rejection of the velocity vector from the surface take it away once that will remove this component and we'll be going like this sliding along the surface now if i take it away again we'll actually be rebounding from the surface so i'll take away two times the rejection onto the surface just like that another way to look at this is this is the standard reflection formula you could also interpret this rejection from the surface as the projection onto the normal of the surface right because here's my normal vector if i find the component of v or you know here's my normal vector right doesn't matter if i find the component of v which is parallel with the normal that is the same as the component of v which is parallel with i'm oh, sorry perpendicular to the surface because the relationship is that the normal vector is perpendicular to the surface it's all linking together i know i'm a little diffuse in my explanation but it's all connected okay one more example let's say that we have some surface it could be a triangle I'll, I'll go with a plane right so i have a plane and i'm ray tracing onto a plane and my ray has hit that plane and i want to know sort of how far it is along the tangent vectors but that plane could be oriented in a weird way right it could be spun around and the ray could be sort of coming off like this like it's not it may not be immediately obvious what the coordinate of this point is on the plane local to the plane so just a few definitions let's say we have an origin point for the plane and from that origin point we have two tangent vectors i'll just go t for tangent and then this is another linearly independent tangent vector i'll call it b for bitangent and this just has to do with the fact that to make a plane you just need two tangent vectors 
and they can always form a plane. But I want to measure sort of how far we actually are along each of these vectors, whoops, to get to this uh, collision point. Well, this is actually totally fine. Let's, let's put O for origin, or at least local origin, and P for collision point. Okay, so what I want to do is I'll have the vector u, and this will be if I take the direction vector from the from the origin to the collision point, and I get its projection onto the tangent vector. That's sort of indicating how far we are local locally to the planes like x space or u space or whatever you want. And then similarly, for the v, we'll take the displacement to the uh, to the intersection point, and we'll project it onto the bitangent, just like that. Then what we can do is we can take the norm of these vectors, and these will indicate the uv texture coordinates on that plane that we hit. It's also really useful because we can define a range of UV texture coordinates and say, well, if we're outside of that range, then we've hit the mathematical plane, but we haven't hit the finite region that we want to render. Anyway, so with all of that out of the way, let's have a look at how we actually compute this in code. Alrighty, hello. So welcome to my new setup, Aesthetics on Point. Let's make a function for a linear projection just go right down here, open this up, all right. So we want to project some vector u onto some vector v. First of all, I'm going to take the normalized version of v and I'm gonna go ahead and call that the basis vector. So I'll say already, um, Go ahead and do that. And then I'll apply my formula. So my coefficient will be the dot product of u and my basis. That will give me the length of my projection. And then I'll just resolve it into the direction of my basis just like that cool so i'm just as before going to go ahead and copy that over into each of my different vector types not much has to change i can just come in and uh, because these functions are all well defined i can just change the data types just like that. Excellent. Cool. And now I'll do my vector rejection. So again, I'll go up to the vec2 and this will be very simple as a matter of fact. All I need to do is take my original vector and from that subtract everything which is in common with V, which I get by the projection. Just like that. Cool. And now as before, I'll go ahead and make my variations of it. There we have it. So far, so good. So what I'll do now is I will just go over and make some test code. Okay, cool. So I've got my two vectors, u and v. Why not keep using that? So first of all, I'll get the projection of u onto v. There. 
then I'll go ahead and I'll get my rejection. Okay, now what I could do is I could verify that um, the projection plus the rejection equals U, but mathematically, we know that that's gonna happen because that's sort of how I defined the rejection function anyway, sort of a tautology. So what I can do instead is let me verify that the dot product between the projection and the rejection is zero. This will indicate that the projection and rejection are perpendicular to each other. Cool. Okay, so again, we've got these two vectors, U and V, they're defined up above. We're going to investigate their projection and their rejection. Well, let's, let's see what happens. Okay, cool. So this is a good sign because the vector V has the proportion that everything's the same sign and the Z component is double the other components. And we see that we still maintain that in the projection. So we get that the projection is parallel to the basis vector V because they're related by some proportionality constant. Uh, rejection looks good as well. And then if we take the dot product of these two vectors, we get something which is close enough to zero. Cool. So there we have it. Hope you enjoyed this session. Hope you're learning some stuff, seeing how it all connects maybe thinking about how you can apply it in your own projects. And I will see you again soon. Bye.